I've had to get through a lot of hard times in my life. The healing part is being able to talk about it, being able to release it from your soul. Confession is definitely good for the soul. I believe in confessions. One, two, three, the bombs! who says in his new a and &E documentary biography, Bobby Brown gave him a chance to close the chapter on the media's biggest quandaries, something that was crucial for him to move on with his life so that he could get started on his next chapter. And Bobby, I don't know how you move past grief, and that's not what you're doing here, particularly when you took the viewers into the most personal part of your life, which was going to Bobby Chris's grave for the first time mm -hmm. and Whitney's grave site. Yes. What was that like filming that for you? Um, I don't know. It, 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 it really, the whole day just seemed like it was uh, a dream. Was it uh, your idea? Yes, yes. I, I, I wanted to um, finally um, see where they, you know, are resting at. Um, Why hadn't you gone before? I don't. I really don't like uh, grave sites. I haven't been to my mom's or my dad's or you know anybody else's, to say the least. Um, what does your therapist say about that? That I should go. <laughs> <laughs> that I should you know uh, stop being fearful. Um, and just go ahead and uh, get it get it all out. Uh, was the fear that the goodbye is real? Because I, I know that we know that there were things at Whitney's funeral that prevented you from having the closure that you and the kids wanted. Mm -hmm. uh, understanding the loss of Bobby Chris and Bobby Jr. That's a whole nother like weight. Is it if I go to the grave, they're really gone? What it was the fear? You explained it perfectly, perfectly just now, yeah. It's probably that, you know. Um, I hold, I hold um, a lot inside, you know. Um, talking about it helps me get it out. Uh, going to the different places help me get it out. Um, just visiting different cities that I've been in to, um, to just clear clear the cobwebs out, you know. Um, it always seems like, you know, another 10 pounds have been taken off me once I do it. That's uh, interesting you say that, because I do know after the loss of, well, all of the losses, but your children, Whitney, and then your parents, I remember thinking one day, how much can one person take? Mm. You know, and I know you're strong and you have your beautiful wife and your beautiful family, but I, I, I have thought about you and thought, gosh, why is, why so much on one person publicly? Have you ever asked that question? No, I don't question God. Mm -hmm. God... <laughs> he, he, won't, he won't put too much on me that I can't bear, you know? Um, he knows, he knows how much I can personally take. Really? Because I think most people would think the loss of two children in such tragic ways would be more than any person could. What do you think prepared you or allowed you to, to be strong in the midst of? Again, not just the grief, but it's public and everyone's mm -hmm. asking and you can't turn on the TV, it's in every paper. And everyone is there in many ways to support you, but it's something that you have to go on on your own. Yes. What in your life prepared you, you think, to be strong enough to handle these things? Just love of family. Um, how my mother, my grandmother taught me how to love. Um, you got to love from your heart unconditionally. And um, that's what I try to do with everything that I, you know, that comes, to, that comes beating down towards me. Um, I remember to love, you know. Um, have you ever felt helpless in all of this, especially with the loss of the ch your children? At times, at times I felt a little helpless, uh, but with the with my children and and my wife, um, they keep me they keep me uplifted. They keep me strong. You said that confessions are good for the soul. 
What was the hardest thing to confess in the documentary? Probably the priest situation. What do you mean? That was the hardest thing to talk about. Um, because I had, I had written about it, but I had never publicly talked about it, um, was something that um, I didn't know that was a big weight on me that was um, really bothering me. I didn't know it was bothering me to the point where, you know, I couldn't stop drinking or I couldn't stop, you know, um, beating myself up. Uh, so getting it out really, really took, it took a toll on me. And this was, because the documentary is, is filmed and we know that it's produced, it still though felt when you watch it, so much of it was unplanned like that moment. Mm -hmm. It was. Um, that's the way we shot it with Jay, um, Kevin Swain, who is the director of the doc. Um, he's a good friend. Um, we've traveled the world together. We've sat and ate some of the greatest food uh, together. And uh, we're all foodies, so. Yeah. <laughs> you know, uh, so, you know, I felt a comfort a comfortness with with him. So they just said, go do you, we will follow. Yes. And you were able to, in your mind, forget that camera was there and give us you. Basically, yes.